Hi guys, welcome to my lecture where we will uh, talk about logical relations. So this is the first section where we talk about the basics, the atomic sentences. All right, so we begin uh, studying logic by building a precise logical language. Well, why do we want to do, uh, do that? Well, there are at least two reasons. One, um, with the help of logical language, we can, when we say something, we can be more precise. And second, we can study reasoning, which we will use a lot in more advanced uh, economics courses. Well, um, in, in this course, we are not going to review the entire uh, logic, but we are going to talk about sort of the basics of propositional logic. And the basics, uh, the propositional logic uh, starts, the, the main ingredient is what we call sentences. Uh, sentences like, how are you? What time is it? Well, the weather is so nice, etc. And so the basic ingredient of a logical language is what we call atomic sentences. They are independent uh, uh, parts, independent smallest parts of a language, sentences. We want our uh, language to be precise. Uh, for example, a, a sentence like Tom is kind of tall is, is not kind of uh, sentences we are interested in uh, when we uh, study uh, logic or, or, or logical reasoning. So therefore, what we call uh, declarative sentences, this is the sentences that we will be looking at. Uh, they are sentences that are either true or false. They can't be both. They can't be neither. All right. Um, a sentence like Toronto is the capital of Canada is a, is a uh, declarative sentence. The world is square is a declarative sentence. All right. Um, so they're either true or false, neither uh, both and, 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 and never both, never either. It's traditional in logic that instead of writing the long sentences, we just uh, use, you know, uh, letters to indicate those sentences like P, Q, R, S, T, right? So whenever you see something like P equivalent to uh, Tom is tall, it means uh, the P is basically means the sentence or the truth value of these two sentences are the same. All right? So when I have any uh, sentence or statement, well, I know that it's either true or false. So we call this sort of uh, small table truth value of a statement. And later we are going to build more complicated sentences and we will also uh, uh, analyze their truth tables. All right, so I'm gonna give you an example. So let's say P is the following sentence. <clears throat> you get an A plus. And then Q is the following sentence. I will give you $100. So when I say something like this, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it says P implies Q. P implies Q. Uh, but for the example that we have, it reads basically as follows. If you get an A plus from some course that we're talking about, well, then I will give you $100. Okay. So what can I say about the truth value of this more complicated conditional sentence. Well, it's conditional because I'm going to give you $100 conditional on you are getting a plus from that course. Okay, so we have two statements, P and Q, the two atomic statements that constitutes my conditional sentence. P implies Q. So therefore, the truth value of P implies Q is going to depend on the truth value of P and Q. Right. So here's the key thing. Uh, 
because P and Q are either true or false, well, then the same is true for this conditional sentence P and Q, P implies Q. So it's either true or false, can't be both, can't be neither. Well, so how many cases that I need to analyze? Well, there are four cases. Uh, P can take two values, Q can take two values, so two to the power of two, so four possible combinations. So they both can be true. P can be true, but Q can be false. The other way around, P can be false, but Q is true. And then they both might be false. All right? So how do I fill the rest of this uh, table? So here's the intuition that I have. Um, so suppose a scenario where you actually get uh, A plus and I pay you $100. So I kept my promise, you succeed getting A plus. So therefore this statement is true, right? We can't deny that it's, it's, it's uh, true. Well, what if you get an A plus, but I, I don't keep my promise and I pay you, uh, I don't know, 50 bucks, so not 100. So I didn't keep my promise. So this, this statement, this proposition is, is not true. So it's false. Well, what if the other two cases? So the P is false. That means you actually cannot get A plus. Say you get uh, B or B plus, something not A plus. Well, in that case, whether I keep my promise and pay you $100 or not, I'm not the one who will break my promise. All right, so that, that statement remains to be true. We can't say it's false, all right? So therefore, uh, the conditional statement P implies Q is always true, except one case where Q is false and P is true, okay? So this is how we construct uh, the truth table of any conditional statement. Right? It's not just for this specific example, but we can generalize this for any P and Q. All right. So sometimes when we write P implies Q, we also read it as follows. P is sufficient condition. Sufficient condition uh, for uh, Q. And we also say equivalently Q is a necessary condition for P. So the first one, the P is sufficient condition for Q. That means, well, if Q holds, it's sufficient enough, then well, then the Q must be true. And then, and then the Q is the necessary for P. So if P, Q, Q doesn't hold, well, then P can't hold because it's necessary. All right. So one final ingredient that I would like to uh, uh, introduce is the negation, all right? What if I want to say something like Tom is not tall? Well, then you can say tall, uh, uh, Tom is short, right? But how do we denote it? So negation is, is of, of say any sentence P is denoted by this symbol and, and it's written or, or, or read as not P, all right? And obviously, if P is true, if P is true, not P must be false. If P is false, not P must be true. So it's sort of, uh, in terms of its meaning, it's the opposite, all right? So example, let's say P is the sentence, the earth, is not the center of the universe, all right? Uh, it's not the center of the universe, so this statement is true. So not P means, well, it's not the case that the Earth is not the center of the universe, so there's two nots, uh, but that means they, they cancel each out. So the not P can be also uh, written as the Earth is the center of the universe, and that sentence is, that statement is false, okay? So that's it for uh, this section.